when we when we get started, I'm just gonna do like a little bit of a hype intro, just like what's up everyone, welcome to a, another deceiving live stream, that kind of stuff. Uh, it's coming through.
Alrighty, what is up, everyone? Welcome back to another Deceive Inc. live stream where we're going to be talking about the music of Deceive Inc. I'm Ewok from Tripwire Interactive, joined by my cohorts, Molly and Pacini. Pacini is the uh, audio uh, designer and music producer for Deceive Inc. Uh, we're super excited to dive right into the soundtrack of, the, of Deceive Inc. Uh, how's it going, guys? You guys having a good day? Yeah, pretty good. How about you? Yeah, uh, Mia? it's it's Friday, so it's Friday. heck yeah! Absolutely, yeah. Super excited to dive in. Hope everyone out there in chat is having a good Friday as well, and uh, the wait for Deceive Inc on Tuesday isn't going too long. Uh, but it, hopefully, we can tide you guys over with a little deep dive into the the game soundtrack. So to start it off, uh, Pacini, like I got to give you props. Like the the soundtrack is awesome. It's so groovy. Uh, it's full of earworms. Like, what is your background? Like, how did how did you find yourself making music for video games? Like, who are your key influences? Like, okay, so um, how did I find myself making music for a video game? Uh, your guess is as good as mine, <laughs> <laughs> because originally I well, my main job uh, when I started in the industry it was UI designer and graphic designer, um, and I still do that work at Sweet Bandits, but um, over the course of the years, I did a couple of game jams with um, my co uh, colleagues at Sweet Bandits at our previous uh, job. And I always ended up making the music because I'm a music guy. And so when the Bandits start, founded their studio, uh, they approached me and asked me, well, do you want to make uh, the audio and the music for the game? And well, of course I said yes, but uh, my resume was pretty much a blank page <laughs> regarding, you know, my credits in video games. So, uh, yeah, that's how I ended up making this uh, groovy soundtrack. That's cool. Uh, yeah, and yeah, you, you talked about the influences as well. Um, I also make music. Um, I perform under the name of Simon Crest. Always be plugging. Go listen to my music. <laughs> <The joke. laughs> yeah, kidding aside. Uh, I for the game my main influences were um you know the uh, composer for the uh anime Lupin the 3rd I'm talking about Yuji Ono uh also uh the the um, composer for the Persona series uh, Shoji Meguro and also Anderson Pack's work has been truly influential uh Jesse Ware's music Janelle Monet Parcells Daft Punk and we've got a geek give props to also some classics such as um, Curtis Mayfield, the Eiley Brothers, uh, Carly Simmons from, uh, you know, the James Bond soundtrack. So these, I tried to gather a lot of influences from left, right to create a whole that is cohesive, that creates some, as you said, earworms, and that just uh, feels groovy, right? For sure, It yeah. is very groovy. Yeah, and yeah. like, it's funny that you mentioned uh, Anderson Pack and Janelle Monet and uh, people in that. Uh, current crop of like neo soul and and funk and stuff. Yeah. There, there's that DNA is all over the soundtrack as well, and you know throw in some disco and uh, you're right there. Yeah, yeah, true. I mean, like we live, I think a in a great age for this kind of a disco influence, disco infused uh, revival of some sort, and with the neo soul crops as you said. Um, so I do think we're the, it felt just right, considering the theme, considering what what's the current zeitgeist for the music. It just felt natural to have this kind of a of a pizzazz and the, this kind of groove, right? So, for sure, groove with the capital G. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rocket Man in chat just typed it out. Do 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 do, and chat's <laughs> like, I can I can hear it just reading it, and it's yeah. It's I mean. Uh, I'll, I'll take this as a compliment. And I, one, one of the uh, the fun thing is that this extraction theme has been one of the first thing that I made for the game, and it's one of the things that changed the least. You know, hard hard cells like ambient music has changed a lot throughout the development, yeah. but this one was just um, the first draft was um, the gold nugget, I guess. It's just it it kept uh, it was sticky 
it was sticky enough to last the the whole uh, development process and it's just i thought i was going to get tired of hearing it like <laughs> trust me <laughs> i am not um too keen on listening my own songs and i just yeah no it's just it's a banger <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. We were kind of talking a little bit beforehand, and I remember one of the first times I got my hand on the game, I was like, oh, I love this, but I feel like this is this might get old after a while. And it never did. And yeah. I, to, um, <laughs> I find myself humming it, like, just doing <laughs> my own thing, not working or sitting in front of a desk at all, just... <laughs> yeah, I I definitely get that. Well, thanks. Hope I'm uh I'm glad to be uh with all of you in your all of your waking hours. <laughs> <laughs> You're with us always, Simon. Always, always watching. That, that's uh, that's a spy's work, right? So is, I'm always is. with you, always watching. You never know. Right, always in the shadows. You have yeah. infiltrated our ears. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I, I guess, you know, to that point about infiltrating the ears, like how how do you approach like creating a unique sonic uh, signature for deceiving? Like like what are the elements of the game that you uh, wanted to carry into the music or vice versa? Like how maybe does yeah. the music sort of contribute to the feel of the game? Yeah, uh, I well, as I mentioned, the influences, of course, um, that's like one of the key elements It's just referencing stuff like in visual arts you gotta you know um, use reference and just think about what other people's did that fit the context of your game and um, other than that it's just about you know the um, emotions and what you want to convey what's what's the vibe I know it's, it's a vibe has been a uh, generic term that has been overused but it's just in that in that case it's very um, on point to um, do I want to, what do I want to convey? So I just go with that. And usually I start with a melody like da, 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 and then I just build upon that. It's then may, it might be the bass, might be the drums. It might be, uh, some guitars, some, some, some flourishes, but that's generally my modus operandi It's just what do I want to convey? And then all hell breaks loose because uh, my workflow is a mess. <laughs> <laughs> That's, you know, whatever works, right? Like as, as long as it ends up with a, a clean and, and nice fin final product, doesn't, doesn't matter how you get from A to Z. Yeah, exactly. That's that's what I think. Sorry for cutting you, Mia. Just... Oh, no. And I'm just saying yeah, and vibe nailed. <laughs> yeah. <For> sure, <laughs> well, sure. thanks. It's um, it's just it's such an iconic period of time that I wanted to give some sort of homage in in any way that I could. Right? It's just it's so um, I it's a golden age musically. I think for a lot of reasons. I mean, I don't want to uh, to go into the uh, the discourse that oh everything was so much better back then. No, there's a <laughs> there's a ton of great music that gets busted out every day and if you don't think so it's just that you don't know how to look or where to look but it's just it had a certain appeal a certain style that isn't that it's that it is coming back but for so long was um wasn't there so i just felt i needed to give that kind of homage to this period yeah fantastic i mean it, like it is you know easier now that it has ever been to just be in, an independent artist who puts out their own stuff and you know that seems to be paving the way for so many people like yourself uh who are just yeah. talented composers um yeah ex so like clearly you're a multi-instrumentalist like what what do you play primarily like um okay i my main and first instrument i'm a bit of a normie i started with the guitar right sorry for uh <laughs> i mean it's i know it's uh underwhelming but i also got uh, some chops in to bass and played a bit of drums also and i um i recently bought a saxophone and started to learn it um oh, nice. I hadn't played saxophone since high school, so it's been a long time, and 
it's I'm learning, and it's ju it's just so great because it's such a different instrument. I mean, I know that guitar and bass are different instruments; they're not the same, but still, there are some um, skills that you can take from one to another and just um, kind of manage, right? But the saxophone is so different from what I'm used to that um, it's it feels great. And of course, I produce a lot on the computer and doing electronic beep boops and that kind of stuff. But that's that's mostly uh, uh, boring for you guys, I think. We love a good beep boop. Which uh, which yeah. saxophone <laughs> did you uh, did you grab? Alto, tenor, um, or soprano? Uh, I took an alto when I was in high school, eons ago. I I played the tenor, but um, there was a used one. An alto used one, and it just felt great. It was beautiful. And then I, I was probably the, the easiest client for the guy I just entered. I want to play saxophone. What you got? Showed me two saxophone, pick one. Okay, very nice. Uh, what's the what's going to be the bill? <laughs> so, <laughs> we, the, we, we love these kinds of uh, easy <laughs> sales, I think. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So why don't we go ahead and uh, and dive in? I'm going to switch the screen over because uh, we have Ableton open in the other uh, in in another window here. Uh, and if, yeah. you, if you could just walk us through, like, uh, just what are what are the elements that give Deceiving's music the like distinctive secret agent, uh, you know, spy caper type of flair? Yeah, exactly. So just to uh, give you a bit of context, this is uh, the extraction theme, the the one that everybody's got in their ear every every waking hour but the trailer version so i had a bit of a, a little glitz and glam to the to the original one that had a bit of more of a grit right so i'll just start playing with uh only the the melody you know the lead the thing that gets stuck in our head forever so Ooh. i can see and this Chad we, is getting excited <laughs> so we've got the piano, we've got some strings also, and then I'm just going to add, uh, I don't know, let's go with, with the drums. Oof. Just get the groove going, and then add some brass, you know, it's just bu building up upon. And now we've got a bit of a breakdown with the bass. Right. Just getting into it. You know, that that's the slow-mo part of the trailer, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, chat's jamming right along with us. Let's go. And then we've got some, some more percussions, some keys. And then we'll go with add this, a bit of strings. And then... <laughs> yeah. So that that's the fun thing. It's that uh, for deceiving... I tried to work uh, lazily. I, I'll explain <laughs> later, but it's just that I, I'll just okay. That felt good. That's really so, nice drop. Really nice. Drop. Yeah. So the thing is, as I said, I try to work super lazily, and by that I mean that I created a couple of motifs and melodies that are sticky, like the da 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 da, and this brass thing that is how I call what I call the uh, deceive ink as a uh, as a uh, company in world theme right mm -hmm. so it has the big bravado of a James Bond opening or that kind you know it's it's fin it's boisterous it's very loud it's very um, uh, triumphant but um, and I try to take some of these motifs and just play with them, just recontextualize everything. And just sometimes they're uh, with this kind of instrument, sometimes they're with this kind of instrument to uh, change the vibe and just change how uh, the uh, the player will approach and hear the uh, the melody. So sometimes uh, it's super boisterous, and sometimes when you pop uh, when you when you're in the menu it's just much more relaxed and super uh, low key but this uh, this theme is still there <laughs> it's just always watching that's i think that's why it's such an earworm it's i've got a little i've got little amount of melodies but they're always there and people just subconsciously take them in all the time 
for sure yeah it's, it's just like there's a, a a merry band of musicians who are all kind of like taking their turn just coming in and <laughs> something and... yeah exactly and it's it just like um you know, I think another game that did this very well is uh, Undertale. There are a lot of little motifs that come uh, and a lot of songs and just comes back every once in a while. So I took this approach to um, make a lot of impactful songs with the least amount of work to do. So that's why I, uh, I told that I was a bit of a lazy bum by doing this. <laughs> It works. All right. yeah, it works. Yeah. yeah, I've got some some fun guitars also. The way these songs just build. Yeah, well, thank. Oh, I truly uh, wanted to create this kind of tension, but not make it um, overbearing. Right? It's you clearly you uh, you see someone that has. Um, a lot of bravado, it's, but there's a challenge. There's something's going on, and they need to um, overcome these challenges, just like in the game. And what I want to—I'll just change song just for now. I think a lot of people. I saw a, li a bit of discussion over at this in Discord and over the internet that people liked uh, this Silver Reef song, if I'm being uh, correct. So I'll just open up the. Silver Reef project and just go through this uh, music project just to uh, give you a little idea how uh, music in levels before the extraction are built because we wanted to convey this kind of storytelling, this kind of narrative that uh, everyone is uh, building toward um, the mission. So, and we needed to have some kind of musical feedback between when you're in cover and when you're out of cover. So it's uh, very uh, a weird uh, mishmash of uh, things going on. Yeah, and for instance, like, for for the people uh, in chat who may not have uh, played Silver Reef yet, it's a underwater map. It's uh, it really blue. It's uh, set in a uh, luxury resort that is is built underwater. So, uh, could you talk more about like what like the uh, the intention behind? like the the production here to kind of make the music reflect the like underwater theme of the map yeah itself. sure okay so as you said it's an underwater resort um and just to give more of the context for the world building even if i mean there's not a lot of uh, narrative going on but we try to take the winds where <laughs> when we can so this underwater resort has been entirely booked by an evil pair of a fashion mo uh, evil pair of twins that are fashion moguls that sells um, military fashion pieces. So, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I don't know what kind of, they've, they, uh, some stiletto with a poison blade instead of an eel, right? For instance, and so with that in mind, I approach with a very um, fashion forward uh, mind to give some kind of a, um, the kind of music that would play in a high fashion boutique something that gets you uh want to spend money but not pressure you so something a bit laid back but um that feels rich and underwater since it's underwater and also one one funny thing uh that one of the bandits i think it's uh, uh kim um it must be subconscious but this song sounds a lot like rock with you from janet jackson so i do think i subconsciously took some some aspects with the the, the roads the little uh synth arps that goes at the beginning it's super um uh like it, it struck me when i re-listened to the song I, oh, oh <laughs> wow okay this is um very very uh, close in terms of the uh, of the vibe, the chord progression is entirely different, but it's just super. It, it struck it struck me how much or how much of a resemblance of vibe it goes. And so, what we've got in Silver Reef, this is when you're um, underwater. Uh, well, you're in cover. You're underwater because it's an underwater level. Uh, but when you're in cover, um, super moody, super relaxed. And when you're out of cover, that's where um, stuff gets a bit more pumping. Mm. And 
that's um, one of the things that goes throughout all of the levels of the game. You've got a song that plays um, that plays when you're in cover, and when you're out of cover, we add a bunch of instruments just to uh, give some kind of feedback that, yo, if you're in co out of cover, you're probably fighting, so we want to get that blood pumping and just uh, go all out with the, uh, the, with the rhythm. And then for uh, when you're... Um, Progressing, progressing through the map is just we add some some other embellishments, other some other instruments to just convey the feeling of progression of you're going through the mission like any good spy movie. It's just it doesn't so it doesn't feel static and just adds to the narrative and just when somebody picks up the briefcase, the theme that I played earlier, the da 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 starts playing and all hell breaks loose. Um, yeah, that's the. Uh, that's the gist of it. I know it's a lot to take in. I just uh, monologue for a while, but it's just super great to just um, show you a bit of uh, what's behind the curtains musically. No, I, I don't know. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. All you, all you, Molly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it didn't like click that. Oh my gosh! Yeah, there's separate music for in cover versus out of cover. I feel it in the game like i'm aware of it but like the tr the way the music works all together even when it's changing it's it's such a nice trend like the it just works so you're not like um jarred by like a sudden change or anything it feels it feels kind of like natural and organic i love yeah. it yeah yeah thanks it, it was super important to well to us everybody at the bandits but well specifically me and also shout out to ed and mark from tripwire that helped us with that um it was super important for us to not to make it feel natural to give this kind of storytelling vibe that it just clicks it just works and it, you don't know notice it as you said um we want this kind of this kind of additional feed, feedback that just um that just um you know adds to the gameplay and to the tension of this spy fantasy thing that we've got going. Uh, what you, you wanted to speak, uh, Mason, uh, Ewok? Oh, no worries. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it, like, it's awesome uh, kind of having that. Like, a lot of times I'll be playing the game and I'll be, like, uh, really focused on looting up or something. And then, uh, you know, the the next sort of phase starts happening and the music will start changing and it, it is like that sort of subliminal reminder like hey you've got an objective here uh but it's it's not like uh an interruption it's more like uh you kind of surprise and delight the player with this yeah. next uh this next uh loop of music it's just a really fun implementation i'm i'm sure a lot of uh games do it that way but it, it feels so well executed here yeah, thanks. It's just it feels um, so natural in the context of the um, of of your psyche as a player. It's just you've got a notification that oh, there's a vault terminal. There's something that just been unlocked, and then you the music adds a, lit a layer. So it's just it all connects so well psychologically to the player. It's, it feels well. Uh, organic as Mia you said is just I'm so proud of what we've managed to do with uh, this um, little amount of resources it's just it's it's great it's great <laughs> <laughs> so if you could actually uh, dive in a little deeper into what we're looking at here maybe how okay. you uh, how you decided to like uh or, or to pick the instruments that you ultimately ended up working i uh, working with like, like i see a, a Rhodes in there i see a clab yeah. somewhere uh like what what are the inspirations and what are the reasons why you decided to pick these uh particular synthesizers and uh software instruments yeah sure uh the roads that's um one thing that i like to do is um to try to keep things limited, not go um, overboard with the amount of different instruments. I mean, the <laughs> I, I say that, but you <laughs> you saw the extraction uh, the extraction project, and there had a ton of tracks. But that's another <laughs> that's another conversation. <laughs> but for the yeah for the levels, I just uh, wanted to keep things limited. 
because uh, there's there's a road in a lot of the there's always going to be a road because a road was uh, very prominent during the 70s which is kind of the vibe we're going for here and i just felt with these uh, this chord progression just felt very smooth it felt very underwatery i it feels almost like a um a modern instrument um, modern um, interpretation of what would sound like a dry dry docks from Mario uh, Super Mario 64 sure, it's just yeah. very it's very moody drippy it it feels moist <laughs> <laughs> someone in chat actually brought up that um that um that soundtrack um they said underwater levels and games often seem to have memorable themes too i can still have dire dire docks and aquatic ambience silver reef puts my mind at ease for whatever reason it reminds me of memorable auto um underwater themes yeah well glad to be to be uh compared to those two amazing tracks yeah that's the vibe that i'm going for that's what i wanted to go uh, with because it feels uh, so calming and since it's an underwater level underwater level it just felt right I th I don't know if it's because historically a lot of the uh, water level has been a bit of an uh, a bit uh, hard or just a pain in the butt so the, the composers went to make something so super smooth to uh, calm down the player. I don't know if that's the reason Please why. You don't have a heart attack and think you're going to drown IRL. Or... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that might be one of the reasons that a lot of the uh, the uh, underwater levels have such a smooth soundtrack, but at the same time, it just feels natural. Uh, water is often calming, you know, with the spa, with spas and pools at midnight. It's just so um, relaxing overall, so it just feels natural. Um, and then, if we're talking about the instrument, um, I ju also just uh, for uh, I had uh, I put a second road that is drenched in reverb just to make sure that the mood the mood is uh, very floaty, very um, uh, just to, to enhance the smoothness of the of the of the level. Then I just also added a little synth arp that do uh, that does little arpeggios that just go in with some um, little blips left and right just to add some pizzazz, some flair. It feels look it feels luxurious and it feels kind of uh, um, it helps to uh, it helps with the chords to just make uh, it just sits well on the chords, right? It just gives a little flair. But it's not overbearing. It just spars there. It's really great for this. Yeah, I was gonna say and, that arpeggiator like definitely is the thing that sort of ties it to feeling really spy like. Like it kind of sounds like the bleeps of hitting the watch and uh, mm -hmm. things like that, where it it adds that sort of secret agent like uh, grounded maybe sci-fi gadgety sort of vibe. Yeah, low tech sci fi, that yeah. kind of vibe. Yes. Oh, I love this. And then added a bit of some clav, some clavinet, just to go all in with the, like, the synth arp, just some bleep bloops. Do 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 do. Yeah, I can. Oh, that's super, I'll just... nice. super fun. It just, yeah, it just add a little bit of, a, of pizzazz to this um, out of cover track. And then when you're uh, in cover track, and when you're going out of cover, right. now we're bringing the funk back, baby. The funk, the funk's back. <laughs> yeah, um, I use well just to tie back to what I said earlier when I said that I work lazily and I try to keep things limited. Um, it's all the same instrument: the synth arp, the the, the clav, the reverb drenched. Just added a little synth little synth line just to um, just jazz things up then a guitar doing some chops this this specific guitar chop is just everywhere throughout the soundtrack it, i've yeah. i just used it whenever i needed some some kind of some kind of groovy guitar i just reused this baby uh <laughs> every single time 
and then added just a bass that just boom. Man, on Tuesday Bear. I'm gonna be looking everywhere for those guitar chops. <laughs> just. It's just super sparse. It fits with the uh, little clavinet thing. Mm -hmm. Boom, boom, boom. Now, if I just add the roads, it just feels natural. It's just not overbearing, but you you know that something's going on because of the, the rhythm of the bass. The little clavinet doing his thing, and then with the drum going a fourth to the floor, super, super simple, super easy, just something um, that that's thumping and driving, but not super intense, just to keep keep the mood fresh. But hey, there's something going on. You're, you're, you're in a fight, probably. <laughs> right. Yeah. And there's some uh, some bongos in there as well. Congas. Yeah. Yeah. They're, yeah. That's they're... Like really a uh, secret agent to me as well. You know? Yeah, like exactly. That, that just feels Jeez. like it comes in makes it secret these bad boys yeah <laughs> now now if we're also when i was talking about motif there's this specific motif with a flute that mm. i bring in every level um in every level track when you're out of cover so subconsciously when you hear this you know that so you're in a in a tight spot potentially and it's just uh like you, you know, each level song is sixteen measures long. It's it's stupidly short, but it's just so low key, and it just sits there and it's always present. But and it builds up to the extraction song that is more of a proper quote unquote song. That and then it, that's why I think it hits so good because you're always having some sort of audio music musical feedback throughout the level and it just climaxes in a very uh boisterous and loud and groovy track at the end when you're going uh all out and it's a shootout <laughs> yeah I did, that flute part right there is like hearing it on its own it totally recontextualizes it like it sounds so moody like kind oh, of it's like, so moody i love yeah, it yeah it yeah. sounds like like you're in the desert or something but then in context with the track uh, it just you can just tell how it gets uh, how like when added to the rest of the music it uh, becomes like a real layered groove. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, I can dive in another uh, and another uh, project if you guys want. I've got um, one of the menu. Boop, 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 boop. Absolutely, I I would love to take a look and see like what you've done with the other maps if you have any of the other projects for the uh for the other oh yeah maps. i yeah i probably i need i probably need to dive a little a little uh left and right because i'm crazy when it comes to uh, music stuff i'm crazily not organized so <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry for that okay no we can um, take a look at whatever okay great um before i go into the menu uh music are there any questions or things going popping off in chat? Just yeah. Are there any uh, questions from chat? Uh, if there, if anyone has a question, feel free to toss it in, and uh, if we see it, we'll we'll read it out. Okay. So when it comes to the menu, the opening is just the when <laughs> I'm going to say it again. <laughs> this is going to be my uh, keyword for this whole stream. I'm a lazy fart. You hear? the boisterous fanfare for the C-Vink as a company and the little motif thing for when you're out of cover. Right. And this is, this is when you open the game that just slams you with this and with a, a very um, zimmery uh, fwaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
I think it's 1971, but uh, if I'm wrong, somebody is going to uh, correct me in chat. I know that's what people do when somebody's wrong, so... <laughs> <laughs> so, Which is yeah. nice sometimes. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, just <laughs> feel free to correct me. Yeah. But uh, so, it did look it's... like we had a few questions. Yeah, uh, sure. Go answer. ahead. So, uh, Madam Athena asked, mm -hmm. uh, who's your favorite agent? <sighs> My, I've... That we can talk about. Yeah. Uh, I think for a long time I've been a uh, left side main. And recently, I've found a lot of fun with Ace. Um, I don't know, they're so dime, uh, they're so far uh, on the uh, playstyle spectrum. One's uh, going yeah. all in with some baller moves and just going, trying to snag the prize and get away, while the other is super patient and just very posed, just waiting for the right time to attack. Uh, but I don't know, that's what that's been my mood lately. Nice. Very nice. And then I think we have uh, Man with Raft asking, "What's your favorite plugin?" Um. Okay. So this is now we're going to the uh, quote-unquote uh, gear porn now, section yeah, of the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> um. One of, of, of course, I I like Serum, but um, there's a lot of things from uh, Stock Ableton that is super, super, super great. But if you want to add some pianos if you ever use some piano um i wholeheartedly recommend uh imagino piano it's a great plugin to have some natural sounding piano it's um i'm i've used it throughout the whole soundtrack i don't i didn't record a grand piano in a <laughs> in a concert all no i did not i just used this plugin and it just feels super soft super personal and it just fits really well with the tracks the, with the track that I have currently, it's just this piano right here. It's super mysterious. It just feels like you're um, during a trailer in the movie, and there has been some great revelation that just uh, flip over the whole script of the movie. It's just, I love it. For sure, yeah. Then when you. Man with Raps is the sad part in the trailer after. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When you when you get your your briefcase stolen. <laughs> okay. So yeah, this uh, track has been basically my own uh, riff on uh, Diamonds Are Forever's theme. It's just. I love the mystery, uh, the, the tension, the mystery, but it's not overbearing. It's just sitting right there, and when you press play, that's where the bass comes in. And uh, when you're when your match mate, when I for a while it was this song playing when you found a match, just prepping you up. But uh, I, so due to a networking reason, I we didn't use this for uh, for this specific case but the track is in the, in there somewhere else in the game so uh, I hope you find it it's a little more um, hidden than straight up in the menu but yeah so it goes sometimes there are reasons yeah <laughs> <laughs> there are reasons any more questions in chat um chat is kind of in uh what if what if isms um and they're talking about uh the possibility of agents having like their own special song and then someone was talking about oh what if there was a theme or what if the theme was slightly different depending on who has the case now that might give a i don't know if that might give away more than we want to be known because people will learn that but just thinking about um, each character and like what yeah. what would they sound like is cool. For a while, I thought of making sp this exactly having a specific and not changing the song entirely, but you know having a different main instrument for the melody, what, depending on which characters got the briefcase. Um, but it was very much a complete mess to implement and. 
Uh, for gameplay reasons, as you mentioned, it's just great to have this sense of mystery of not knowing what you're going to encounter. Because yeah. if you know in advance that, oh, the person that has the briefcase is an ace, you're going to go all in. But if you don't know, you might you might not uh, act the same way. Uh, exactly. So that's a... But the, the main reason why it's not in the game is because it was a complete uh, amount mess and it was a stupendous amount of work to implement correctly and very bone, uh, prone to bug. So that's why we didn't go this way. And as for, you know, making a theme for each character, that's something that I would have uh, liked very much to do. But uh, time, is, time is of the essence and uh, I... Exactly. I need to do the the music, the audio, and also some graphic design and UI things for the game. So, well, some things uh, get cut. So, and that's how we bring it all into the the whole game development side of it all. Is yeah, figuring yeah. Figuring out <laughs> the... how to how to prioritize certain things over others. Yeah, exactly. But the and I don't want to you know make any promises or just. Um, uh, say, oh, this is definitely something that I want to uh, to do, but it's a nice exercise to None just... None of us uh, really have the power to do that here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, it would be a really fun exercise to try to compose and write a song, like a character's theme, not necessarily uh, plug it in the game for any gameplay reason, but just making them for people to listen. <laughs> that, would, that would be great, but it's... Uh, Huge amount of work, so for sure, yeah. Not, <laughs> not today. <laughs> the game, <laughs> the game's coming out uh, in a couple of days, so I, uh, I've got other priorities right now. <laughs> yeah. So it, it looks like uh, Man with Raft asked, "What's your favorite piece of audio you've done for Deceive?" Um, I know it's cliche, but the extraction theme. I just, it's. I think it hits all the right notes for. I'm just going to bring it, bring it back up. I'll yeah, just bring it back up. Yeah. I'm, I just, I just love it. I just love it. <laughs> Who doesn't? It's just, I've been so in, inspired by, um, you know, the theme from Lupin the Third and Case Closed, the the anime, that it it just fits the theme of the game. It just fits everything. It's really, uh, I think it's my. Uh, my best song that I made for the game. I just absolutely love it. It's just groovy. It's got tension. It's got drama. It's good, but it's not. Um, it's still fun, right? So that's, yeah. I think that's my favorite. Da -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah, Little the fun. the soundtrack always keeps the fun, even when it's like a dangerous moment or a mysterious. Mm -hmm. It like everything is still fun. Yeah, that that was super. Um, important for me since I mean there's a lot of uh, skills in the game there's a lot of uh, danger since um, you know you're, you're you, when you're playing solo you've got basically one one life and then you're out so we, we need to have this kind of of gravitas in the soundtrack but I mean from the looks of the game from how some of the situations in the game are so um, stupid in, in a very fun way, like using, uh, tr transforming yourself into a toilet to avoid uh, your rivals, it's, it'll never get whole. How stupid it is, but it's just so fun. So it was super inf important for me to just keep things light, even if there's a sense of danger. For sure, yeah, and I feel like that, that contributes a lot to the, the overall funness of the game and just like keeping things lighthearted and, and moving without making it feel like uh, too high stinks, you know, like it, it, it's still like yeah. a fun spy caper uh, and the, the music as well as the, just the, the color scheme and the overall art style, I feel like all bring that home. Yeah, and it, it never feels like a joke and that's something that I'm super proud of everyone at Sweet Bandits for making. It's just the game never feels like a joke, even when there are some li literally stupid moments like I described. When you're playing, it's super high octane moments that you need to hide to make sure you'll live another day. But it just happens that you hide as a flower pot. So, right, right. 
This music is is goes perfectly for, for yeah. watching a uh, golden toilet make its yeah. way down the corridor. <laughs> Golden, golden, twenty-four hours golden toilet streams to chill to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a like golden it. toilet at a desk under a lamplight doing its homework. Yeah. <laughs> uh, John from chat said, uh, "When you try to walk with the briefcase, but the music is making you want to run and jump, and and other yeah. people are on that. They're like, I always imagine I'm strolling exactly in time with the song." Uh, yeah. Someone says. Until you, I break into a run. <laughs> you get I mean, if you run and jump, it's a power move. It's just a super chat move and just okay. basically saying, come at me. I can take any challenge. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Okay, so have you, have you got uh, any other questions? Not necessarily from chat, but uh, from you, both of you. I just, um, it's been a wonderful conversation and I just, uh, I just want to know what people want to know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's uh, before we close out, Chad. If you have any uh, last-minute questions, feel free to type them in. Uh, but yeah, uh, Pacini, it's been super great diving into this with you and dissecting uh, just what makes the soundtrack so groovy. Uh, I've had so much fun. I, I have one, and Chad can answer this too. Um, what do you have a favorite um, non? like soundtrack sound like i love um madam snap is perfect. oh yeah yeah the, like you said the watch sound uh yeah um yeah something the, else was thinking yeah madam, madam shoes snap has been was really fun and really great to do also one that i think is um more low-key and more and less like of a girl boss moment is when mm -hmm. Ace activates her um, ability, and you know the uh, the little flute thrill going through with the uh, the hawk sound. Yes. And you just watch how the person that you mark reacts. It just feels so great. With the, <laughs> it feels like you're going on a hunt, and I'm super uh, stoked with this. It's it's like a moment. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Lots of love in chat for the snap. Um, yeah. Martinez says they love the um, the bounce pad <laughs> sound spamming in the in the yeah, in the, the waiting boing, room. Yeah, going boing 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 boing. boing, 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 boing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, got yeah, a shout out to the uh, the recon drone because that you know that buzzing is really yes. characteristic of that particular gadget. And you can yeah, use that's. To your advantage. Yeah, they, that started a bit as a joke a while back when uh, the, the drone was not the first, but one of the early er, gadgets that we developed. And I just um, put out this idea, just what if we make the drone, like usually people tend to think of a drone super sneaky. And I, I just tried, what if we just make it a pain in the ass? What if we make it the most annoying little rat flying around with the mosquito sound you just it it plays into the, yeah. the, the psychological warfare and i just love it yeah yeah because I, I i always hear it before i see it and hearing it causes my panic yeah, yeah. That, that, that's why i this is something that i wanted to do is just you start to hearing and you just you don't want to start moving frantically because you're basically giving yourself yeah, away you're like but you, how do where I look for this without <laughs> where, getting... Yeah, where is it? Where is this drone? Find it! <laughs> Just... yeah. Take it down! Yeah, I love it. It's so... It, it, you, you see, this is kind of little little things, little little details that... Um, that goes a long way to craft a ton of personality with... Um, as I said, <laughs> lazily, with mu without much effort. Just adding something that people every everybody knows the sound of a mosquito and just okay let's just put it on the gameplay element that is supposed to be annoying and it just voila it's just it works <laughs> uh someone else called out um cab's investigative music was all yeah over. yeah just wanted to go entirely uh uh, detective show, you know, with this. It's just, 
super fun and it's I mean we we had some uh, some kind of um conversation with um uh, with a uh, one of the dev and they just they were thinking is is a uh, cavalier just always having some earphones and just listening to this when she starts investigating Ulai. We <laughs> is it in the world or is it just <laughs> for context? Nobody knows. It just it felt right to have this kind of investigative song and yeah, it just it just pops out really you know, really well. For sure, for sure. Well, I think we'll uh, we'll probably close the stream out with that. Thank you so much, Pacini and Molly, for for joining me here and. and diving into the deceiving music i've had so much fun uh thank you to everyone in chat who listened along and asked some questions uh once again deceive inc coming out next tuesday march 21st for playstation 5 xbox series x and s and on pc via steam in the epic game store uh once again i've been ewok you guys want to sign yourselves off sure i've been pacini uh Mu music guy for Deceive Inc. Also performing under the name of Simon Grass. Always be plugging. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, hope you, hope you guys enjoyed. Huh? You'll probably link your your stuff in the Discord if you want. Oh yeah, somewhere I'll in, sure the, I'll in the in the off-topic stuff, people would like yeah. you. Yeah, sure. So right, oh, yeah. Molly, happening <laughs> <Yeah>. off. <laughs> Great. Distracted. Uh, it's it's been super great. So, well, thank thank you for the uh, for letting me uh, talk about the the stupid stuff that I make. That sounds good. <laughs> nah, Absolutely. the great stuff. Yeah, so fun. <laughs> Far from stupid well, as well. Nah, no, you making me blush. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Have a great weekend, everyone. We will see you Tuesday. Yeah, see you lunch see day. Ya.